Good morning my dear students. Today is April 6th, 2020 and I am Ananya taking care of English of class 10. Our topic for today is Poetry, Fire and Ice which is written by a famous poet Robert Frost and I would like you to take a pen, a notebook or your textbook so that you can write all the important points while I discuss the symbols used in the poetry and the reference of particular words which are there in the poetry to what the poet actually means for those words. Some say the world will end in fire and some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. Now the poetry is written in first person and the poet is giving his own point of view by telling that some people think that the world when it comes, a doom day comes and when the world is going to end, it is going to end in fire. But some say that it is going to end by the destruction of ice. But what does the poet say? What I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire he says that i'm in the i am standing with those people i agree with those people who said says that the world is going to end with the destruction of fire but if it had to perish toys perish means end if the world had to end for the second time i think i know enough of hate he thinks that then i think that the hate that we have that people have in the uh, in the world is no less there is enough of hate and to say that for destruction ice is also great and then he says that for destruction of the world the why ice is also great and would suffice will satisfy will surely lead to destruction of the world and now first i want you to focus the rhyme scheme of the poem is quite inconsistent. The first word line ends with fire. They have put here the pronunciation of the last words. So it is A, B, A, A. It's fire, desire, fire. So A, A to all of them. Ice, toys, B, B. Then there is hate. So A, T, E. And then there is great. Again, a sound 8 is coming, so it is uh, marked C, C, right? So it is A, B, A, A, B, C, B, C, B. This is the rhyme scheme that the poetry is following. And then we have, will the world end in fire? It is the big question that we have. Or will it end in ice? Now, there is a contradiction that the poet says that he agrees first with the people who say that the world will end in fire and second time he says that he agrees with the people who say that the world will end with the destruction of ice so the big question is what exactly will cause the destruction some say the world will end in fire and some say in ice and there are uh, two literary forms and techniques one is narrative that we just go into the meaning of the lines, they are quite meaningful, we can translate the meaning. And second is symbolism in which we will actually study the poetry. A few words in the poetry will be obviously giving us a meaning, they will be standing as a symbol. You remember the poetry Dust of Snow? I told you Robert Frost always used symbolism in his poetry. He used things of a very general use, uh, use in our daily routine and then try to uh, use their natural behavior to something else in our real life. Right? So that is symbolism. Now the narrative explanation of the poetry is from a narrator's point of view, the significance of what is said in the poem is, he says, I tasted, I hold, I think, I know, that he feels, is that it suggests a personal connection and it also expresses experience for from the author point of view. But what he feels, fine, that is the narrative uh, explanation. But then there is symbolism. Fire and ice are the two major symbols of the poetry. 
and symbolism is used in such a way that the poet says describes the destructive forces that could lead to the end of the world and even more specifically people themselves keep in mind because of the symbolism in this poem interpretation is left for the reader to determine which means that fire here is a symbol of humanly desires passions emotion ice is a symbol of hate hatred that we have for other people so now when we read the poetry the first two lines the world will end in fire or by the destruction of ice we might derive many different meanings in our own mind right now some more look into the poem's structure and that is here right over here some say the world will end in fire and some say in the ice again there is a use of imagery and some main symbols are used how so most important part of the poem is here from what i have tasted of desire the poet stands in the favor of desire here he has mentioned desire what we he has tasted of desire that it is limitless it is unbounded in human race love desire emotions are uncontrollable so he compares fire with all those humanly emotions and says that fire is much more stronger than what the second symbol that we have that is ice by ice he means hatred somewhere hatred stands buried in our heart we tend to ignore it some go into revenge of course but that is a rare case right when we come to humanly emotions like love desire that is uncontrollable and that is something which can actually cause the end of the world most important part of the poem is here but if it had to perish toys he says it acts as a pivot or a break in the poem that he thinks that now he compares both the symbols he has used the both the elements of nature fire and ice he keeps them in an equality he partially contradicts first statement says that to say that for destruction ice is also great now he contradicts he tries to question his own opinion of the destruction of the world here and lightens the mood he kind of lightens the mood that if when he is saying that fire is forceful some of you students must be thinking no oh, ice can also be very destructive it's water in the form of floods in the form of glaciers in the form of right so all those uh, at the topmost roofs of the snowy mountains right so we can say that ice is also destructive you might become quite argumentable here so he lightens the mood of the poetry by saying that i am not saying that ice is not destructive i think i know enough of hate by ice he means hate and to say that he says destruction of that ice is also great i am not nullifying the effect of ice right he says let us now take a look at fire and this is one of the most important part from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire desire passion please note them down somewhere love and lust are all emotions associated with fire in this poem all right and all of those emotions can be very detrimental to a relationship or to a person's well being can be detrimental means can affect in a great way this can extend to the entire world literally being destroyed by fire which symbolizes those emotions that these emotions can spread like fire and that is why are strong enough to cause the destruction of the entire world desire is like fire because the human emotions can grow out of control right becoming more and more ravenous fire and human desire can work work quickly to lead to the end of the world by consuming everything around itself 
it is uncontrollable and eventually the flame will diminish it will diminish itself it when it, something is out of control it comes under control by itself when it is out of control obviously we cannot control it anymore so that is how human emotions are and that is how the poet has compared fire with all those emotions of human beings which go out of control right so this is fire how it looks like and now that we have pierced heart of fire let us take a look at ice i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great he says that he knows enough of hate and he says that destruction of ice is no less it is also great it is uh, of huge amount and would suffice suffice means satisfy the destruction will be able to destroy the world if it had to the hate is also present in the world in a very huge extent that it, it can also obviously destroy the world if there is satisfactory amount of hate ice is the hatred of mankind in the world the enviness all those negative emotions contradicting himself ever so slightly robert frost says how hatred could also lead to the downfall of the earth it can also cause the downfall of the earth and the world the last four lines say how hatred can be just as destructive as desire hate is similar to ice because it works in a slower process like ice works in a slower process fire's destruction is quite huge a very uh, prominent example here is the bush fires in australia right the destruction was quite huge but ice destroys its destruction is a bit slower right and people rigidly turn cold towards one another to destroy others and themselves so they generally don't they tend to ignore a person who they hate instead of destroying them right so the de destruction of ice can be said that is very slow in the end ice is as dangerous as fire and both could be the cause of the destruction of the planet they both can do that the both the elements are equally strong and one more question why does robert frost choose fire over ice this is the one question maybe it is because in his own opinion or experiences human jealousy lust and desire are more dangerous and destructive than just hatred alone in his opinion maybe it is because love and desire are also human emotions and vainly used as detrimental to the human race but if they are rightly expressed then love can conquer and over overpower hatred detrimental is a word used here again that uh, these emotions love and desire are also human emotions and mainly used as detrimental to the human race which means that which affect human race with a great intensity now i have some homework assignment for you that is you have to read the poem fire and ice i hope you have paused through the video in between and noted down all the important facts stopping in between and waiting for you to note down is just going to make the video longer i want to do question answers in notebook now question answers of uh, poetry will be done in the first flight part of the notebook you have to revise the poetic device symbolism imagery that have been used here in the poetry i've also told you about the rhyme scheme okay please revise that and read this poetry again and again please try to prepare a self made summary of the poetry so that you understand the poetry in a better sense in a better way i would request all the parents to please make sure that children are paying due attention and taking most benefit out of these video lessons and the e notes thank you have a great day